This next block we're going to discuss is really interesting and I think you'll see that it really opens up a lot of new ways to modulate parameters as well as to work with an audio source. And this is the Pro CV processor. It just stands for processor basically. So what we have here, simple controls. Level, offset, and slew. Before I even explain what those are, most times you'll be using this to basically condition a modulation signal. Meaning I might send an envelope or an LFO into this and then out of it into the modulation destination. Because now once I've done that, I have a little more flexibility on how I want that modulation to work. Much more flexibility than you would have with a VCA because remember you can do the same thing. We did it with contour knob in the modular monarch. But at this point you just basically have one knob you can turn up and off. This one gives you more control. The other way you can work with it is to run audio into it. And you're not going to use it as much that way, I don't think, but this is going to help us visualize what it's actually doing first. So that's how we're going to start. So I'm going to take the pitch of a bento box oscillator out of there into this and this into the VCA. Let's turn it on. You can hear nothing is happening. Well, why is that? We start here with the level. And what this does, this control allows you to attenuate and invert the incoming signal. At zero, at 12 o'clock here, it's completely attenuated. Nothing is passing through. You can see my VCA triggering, but nothing is happening. So as I turn it up, we get an amount. I turn it up this way, we get the same amount, just inverted. So a good way to visualize that is let's actually turn this into a sawtooth and you'll really be able to see what's happening here. Sawtooth as you'd expect, and the other way, inverted into a ramp wave. Okay, so that's easy to visualize. Let's set it up here and work with the next controls. So offset is basically going to move the waveform. Positive negative okay and then slew is basically going to mm, smooth the input signal I guess now on audio this looks like it's basically kind of just filtering almost the waveform softening it kind of way shaping with a modulation amount it might delay slow down the modulation input You'll see in a second. So those are the main controls to worry about. And then you have this section in the middle. And let's turn on info for that so you can visualize. This middle part is basically the, the rectification and clipping area. Over here is choosing again linear or exponential input. So as I have it here first, imagine this as like a control voltage from negative one to positive one and then zero in the middle. So with those values, it's basically going to determine how the signal comes out of it. Full negative one, the full range. If I click it again, we're going to go from zero to one. Check this out. Zero obviously here, and what we've done is just literally clipped off the bottom of this sawtooth, okay? That's called the clip low. If I hit it again, watch what happens to the signal. This is now rectified where basically the values lower than zero are now inverted, kind of just like folded on top of each other. So it's already kind of breaking up nasty. It's got that gritty texture to it now. And then vice versa the other way, we're clipping off the high, folding the low, and back to normal. So right away you can see what you can do. And now imagine if you wanted to kind of do some ring modulation or serious wave shaping, you can do that with this. We could modulate, for instance, maybe modulate the phase real fast and, and get crazy with that. All sorts of things you could basically work with here. In the interest of time, let's see if we can do one real quick. Let's take a second oscillator and let's modulate A. Let's see what we can do here. So we can get an interesting result basically doing that. Let's see.
So we're kind of getting this gnarly wave shaping kind of thing happening, I guess, here. Pretty interesting stuff. So experiment with that by all means. Let's get rid of that. And now instead of coming into this, oops, come on now, oops. Thank God, Command Z will always undo whatever you need. So I just want to delete that wire, delete this wire. Now, let's run this into our VCA, the oscillator. Maybe we want to do a pitch envelope on this. So let's bring in another ADSR and let's use this as a modulation envelope. Let's label it so I can tell which one is which. And now out of here into mod A of the oscillator and we'll just kind of assign it to a pitch. And I need to send it a gate so it knows when the key is hitting. That's a little crispy. Let's turn it down. Okay, so this is a nice option to have. Now, what if I wanted to intercept that though? Let's work with this modulation source a little bit different. Out of here, into the CVP, so we have a little more flexibility, and then back into that same mod A. So now immediately, let's get rid of this. Immediately we can have no effect, or a little bit, or a lot bit, you know? So basically have the full range and just decide how far you want it to go by attenuating a little. That's much easier to turn this knob than it would be to come here and constantly be working with this little lever. You wouldn't want to do that, so you'd want to run into something like this. Now, we can also do things like, oh, I don't know, invert it. So now your pitch goes from low to high. Etc. Slew. Basically smoothing out that input signal. So it kind of does this weird slow ramp up as opposed to a quick one. And then offset where the modulation is going to start and end up. And then the different modes, how far is it going to go? Maybe it's going to go from one to zero to one again in this mode. Or just stay at zero. So you can see right away lots of flexibility. You'll see this uh, when we do some drum synthesis and some drum programming. This is going to come in real handy to shape the tone and timbre of like a kick drum for instance. So awesome, very helpful little box.